they are, but they're just not letting us know. He was speaking about there were, astronomy you know, he in his quotation. He has rather strange views about evolution, and but I would he's not talking about astronomy him authority. Here. But he's concluding intelligent design from astronomy. <laughs> Mr. Berlinski. Dr. Scott, I find myself vexed by your cavalier attitude toward the evidence, especially with respect to the fossil record, and that's the only evidence that your side has presented with great vigor. Would you agree, as almost everyone else affirms, that the overwhelming pattern of the fossil record is sharply discontinuous? Is what I'm sharply sorry? Sharply discontinuous. Sure, it's discontinuous. Okay, so we agree on that. Could I ask you to give us your best estimate of the number of changes required to take a dog-like mammal to a seagoing whale? Can we, first of all, distinguish, which was confused, I think, during the questioning of Phil, evolution is descent with modification. We all are quite convinced that this happened. I'm not. Darwinism, well, on my side of the table. That's for um, sure. Uh, but I had a scientist. specific question. I'm finishing. Um, Darwinism evolution by natural selection is one of the ways by which evolution can take place. The argument that has been presented so frequently from your side of the table is that if you, all we have to do is disprove Darwinism no, no. and we disprove evolution. No, That's no, nonsense. No. I'm trying to Another anchor point, the discussion I will try to answer your question. in I'm something sorry. factual and concrete, like a number. Why do you assume that the fossils are the only source of data for I evolution? I certainly don't. You're absolutely right. But I'm talking Good. about the whale, right? Large seagoing mammal. The thesis is mm -hmm. that there's a Darwinian progression, and the evidence is three or four intermediates. I'm asking you to give us your best estimate of the number of changes required to take the, a dog-like mammal to The number of genetic changes? Morphological, physiological, just give us a number. Is it that's, three? That's is it an ten? absurd question. Why? None of us, None of us on the evolution side of this argument has ever proposed that we can come up with the number of changes. Then that's how on earth question. can you commend the mechanism if you are unsure whether it's adequate to Why the result? Why are you so fixated on the mechanism Because of that's the selection? heart of your doctrine. It's a theory. It's it a is, scientific theory. Would you agree with me that if you disprove evolution, excuse me, if you disprove natural selection, you therefore disprove evolution? Sure. You're wrong. Why? Because evolution, because natural selection is only a way by which evolution there is can no take place. Other the evidence will still be the there theory. from but homology, from the from uh, anatomical homologies, biochemical homologies, and the fossil record. We're not dependent Dr. on the fossil record. Focus on my question. I'm begging you. We have a theory. I answered it. The theory is the theory of random mutation and natural selection. I'm asking I, you to apply it to the case of the progression from a dog-like mammal to a seagull. I'm begging mammal. you not to. So. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Scott. <laughs> Mr. Walensky, Mr. Walensky, you're up. And uh, Mr. Berlinski will question Professor Miller, and then Professor Miller will question Mr. Berlinski. Can I go first? Yes. Professor Miller, would you agree with the, the statement that nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution? It's very often quoted. The, the statement you're making is made by Teodosis Dobsansky. It's and often attributed to Ernst Mayer also. That, f fair right. enough. Um, and, and, and in a simple way, so I, uh, I don't have word games played on me. No, I would not agree with it. I think there are things in biology that are perfectly sensible even if evolution is not correct. Because However, the interrelation, our understanding of the interrelationships between organisms, phylogeny, and natural history does indeed only make sense in light of evolution. But in terms of your own very fine work in cell biology, evolutionary theory plays no role whatsoever. Does evolutionary theory play a role in my work? Proton no, transport. For, thank you for complimenting my work. Uh, the answer is no, that's not correct. The reason for that is a few years ago, uh, an investigator discovered a very interesting microorganism, a prokaryote called prochloron. Mm -hmm. Prochloron turned out to be the very first prokaryote organism without a nucleus discovered that had both chlorophyll A and B. This suggests very strongly that in an evolutionary sense, Prochloron is the evolutionary ancestor of the chloroplasts of higher plants. This organism was sent to me because of the kind of structural work I do with the idea, let's put it to the test. Because what we did in my lab was to investigate the structure of its photosynthetic membranes, right. and lo and behold, we found that they were enormously similar to higher plant chloroplasts. If they had been dissimilar, it might have been an argument against yeah, evolution. I, I'm it turned out not to be the case. That you have been invigorated by the shade of Charles Darwin. But the fact is that in your published scientific papers, the term evolution occurs as frequently as the term Presbyterian, which is to say, not 
at all. Well, I, I have to tell you once again, sir, you were wrong on the fact. All right. None of my 75 plus published referee papers uses the term Presbyterian. At least three of them use the term evolution. I stand correct. The details, the details the matter. 75 to 3 against the usefulness of evolution in your own scientific life. Let's leave that question aside and let's pass to another one, since I don't see any way of resolving that particular issue. I still, I still reject it on the terms. You say evolution is not useful. The very reason why we study the translocation of proteins in lower organisms such as yeast is because we believe we learn something about how our own cells work by studying other organisms, and the underpinning assumption for that is, in fact, that's not, evolutionary that's biology. That's nonsense, and you know it. You study it because it's an interesting and accessible question. That's the only... It, only well, sir, the only thing I can tell you is if it really was nonsense, the significant sections I write in the end of my grant applications to the National Institutes well of be. Health would no longer be successful. Could well be. Let's turn to the question um, I, so, I so vainly tried to prompt an answer from uh, Dr. Scott. How many, how many morphological changes do you think were required to affect the transition, those charts of yours were sent to document. Okay, now you are, I'll give, I will give you a straight answer. And the straight answer is that when you look at two species that are separated by five million years okay. of geological time, the number of changes must be very, very large. Give us however, an estimate. However, however, recent studies of speciation, and I'm sorry to pick this specific species, and I, but, I, but it's relevant to your question. Recent studies of speciation in sunflowers have shown conclusively that a new species can be established in terms of a speciation mic isolation mechanism with as few as 10 genetic changes. Yes, That's your I've answer. read the same science papers you have, but those are very close. A dog-like ah, mammal and a whale are very far. That's right. And the other end of the room is very far away. And it True. should not surprise you that I get there with one step at a time. Right. And that's can, what we're talking about. Can I conclude about. that you refuse? No matter the number I give you, you will neither assent nor disagree with the number. If I say there are 100,000 morphological changes required to take a dog-like mammal living on the land to a whale... Uh, oh, oh like sorry, yes, I, I will answer that. That's way too high. We believe that organisms, uh, well, I shouldn't say we believe. The good genetic evidence is that there are about 100,000 genes in human beings. Uh, I would best get, guess there's somewhat fewer in whales. What you're telling me is to change from one similar organism an organism that looks more like a whale than any terrestrial animal that has ever lived to a whale that looks more like a terrestrial animal than every whale has ever lived would require every gene to change. No, and I sir, haven't I would talked about genes. No, you asked me for a number and I said, I said on, that basis, change. on that okay. basis, on that basis, 100,000 is too high. All right, 50,000? Right. My turn. Okay. Your turn. Okay. Now, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, you have said again and again and again the transitions are missing. And I hope no one in the audience missed the fact that Dr. Scott pointed out that the transition from reptiles to mammals, and looking around the room, I see I'm surrounded by mammals. This should be a point of interest to us. There that that transition too. is exceedingly well documented. Now, once again, you said all the transitionals are missing, and I'm confused. If this transition is very well documented, how can you on the same face say they're all missing? You know very well I didn't say that. I agree that the uh, late, uh, late reptile uh, uh, to uh, mammal uh, sequence is well documented. No question about it. Okay, let me go a little further. <laughs> Horses and elephants. The, I pick these organisms because they're large, because they're recently evolved, and because they are recent, we've got lots of fossils. They're easy to pick out. The fossil record of horses and elephants is extremely well documented. Now, you said at the other end of the table, you deny that descent with modification is correct. So here's what I'd I like to know. That. I said I yes, didn't you, believe you said, it. I do, I'm not convinced by it. That's I, don't what, that's a, I a believe, sir, difference. you did. Is it, I said so I'm not convinced. So here's, here's my question. If not descent with modification, please tell me your explanation for the temporal appearance of these extremely closely related, in morphological terms, organisms over time. Okay, two points. First of all, I neither affirm nor deny descent with modification. I said I have no opinion. I don't... I don't happen to have an opinion on that issue. It's vexed, in my opinion. Second of all, you have chosen three, and the only three examples in the fossil record where there's a plausible Darwinian sequence. The dog-like mammal to whale sequence, the You're, elephant sequence, and the horse. Are you Each absolutely one, sure I can't pick up a fourth plan? No, of course not. <laughs> Each one is seriously questioned in the literature. 
The elephant could, could you point out for the benefit of the audience what the question is? You said there's seriously the, question in the literature. The question is, do we have a plausible sequence of morphological changes that lead to the late fossil form from the early fossil form by a, ro a route that makes morphological... And I would argue, sense. yes, we do. And I hope you've read Bruce McFadden's marvelous book. It's an excellent the, book. And I it's an excellent book. And article. he has put enormous effort look, into documenting those changes. So in, in legal terms, sir, case no. closed. We no, got it's it. not closed. This isn't scientific. 